Welcome. I am Betsy. And I'm Jason. We are here to discuss how to assess students during a lesson and after the lesson. During this, we're going to give you some strategies and implementation ideas on different types of assessments. We know you're already assessing students in your classroom. These little videos are really just a reminder to be intentional and to provide structure with your assessments. Those are two words we're going to center our discussion around today, I think. Intentional and structure. So how do you know if your students are learning anything during your lesson? Well, teachers do this naturally during lessons. They uh, think back to previous lessons you've taught. How do you know your students were learning during the lesson? You observe them. You ask them questions when you were walking around the classroom. Um, the trick here is to be more intentional and to provide some structure so that it's not accidental or random in terms of which students you know where they're at with a particular skill or knowledge about a concept. Um, you want to that that intentionality and that structure can help you collect that. So we can't be full time assessors while we're in the classroom. We have to worry about safety. We have to worry about engagement. We have to answer questions or think of new questions to ask them to challenge them further. Um, but we do remember if if we can remember that assessment is a priority in our job, it can help us plan more directed instruction moving forward. So being intentional and providing structure is key. How how do I do that with our assessments? So uh, I think a lot of it has to do with that, again, movement around the room from group to group, from student to student, depending on what you're teaching, depending on uh, what the activities are that students are doing, but then having a way to collect that data. And so that can be carrying a notebook or a clipboard, having a tablet with you, setting up a spreadsheet ahead of time. Um, I've even seen teachers use literally pads of post-its very effectively. Um, oftentimes, like slightly bigger pads, but um, that can be really helpful. And then you're going to collect one of two kinds of data. You might have a scale in mind of of a particular skill, and and you might be categorizing that with a number, a four, three, two, or one, or even just a one or a zero. Did they get it? Or are they still not getting it? Um, and then at the end of class that day, you can look at, OK, who were my kids who are still not getting this? And what am I going to do tomorrow to help support them um, versus who are my students who were getting it? And do they need a different challenge or an additional challenge? Um, you can also, again, like with the post-its, that can be uh, qualitative information that then you can take the post-its or index cards, or again, you could do this in a spreadsheet and you can recategorize them and say, oh, what groups might I have here? So I think those are some of the ideas. And again, this, this isn't going to be the only thing you're going to do. You're not going to necessarily uh, be able to collect this data on every student. One mistake I made was thinking that every day I would be able to collect this on every student. And ultimately, that led me to collect worse data. So sometimes I would intentionally create a structure where, and I told students, today there are five of you. I'm really going to be observing for this while we do everything else. Now, they didn't usually know which five they were. And then over the course of a week, I would be able to collect data on every student in the class. And so, and then it was really over the weekend that I could really look at that data and say, okay, how am I making adjustments for next week? It took me years of trying to collect data on all students to understand, oh, no, no, that's not the best way to do this. Um, but moving, moving around from student to student, from group to group, and having a way to intentionally collect the data and then looking at it uh, afterwards. Otherwise, what's the point of collecting it? Those are some great ideas. Do these activities have to be graded? No. Um, I think one of... One of the things uh, that I've come to the conclusion of is too often we're grading for the sake of grading and we're not using what we've graded to help us with assessment. We feel like we have to stuff our grade book full of as many grades as possible. And so um, 
as a teacher, there's you have to know the kind of the status of where each student's at. And so first of all, that starts with what's really important in terms of skills and concepts. Uh, what are the standards that you are teaching to or the competencies that you are teaching to? So you have to know that as a teacher and then you have to know where students are at. Um, grading can also be part of this intentional system and grading is certainly a structure that we use, um, but, but you don't have to be doing it. You shouldn't be doing it every day. You'll drive yourself crazy. Um, and so I think that really, it's thinking about this assessment system and then where does a grade make sense within that system? Typically, I would say the grade comes after students have had a chance to practice this and, and get better at, at whatever it is um, that they're working on learning or being able to do. OK, so let's say that I'm at the end of the lesson. I have the data. What do I do now? Do I need to do additional assessments? How do I look at it? How do I um, figure out what the next steps are? So let's go back first to that idea of you have a standard or a competency that you're teaching to. So you have to be clear on that first. What is that? And what is like the level of performance that you want your students to get to with that skill or that knowledge? And so then you look at how are my students doing against that standard or competency at that level of proficiency and so then you kind of know oh here's where they're at of course and, um, but i think those two sets of questions that question one where are they at and question two to a what do i do with those who've gotten it and to b what do i do with those who still need some additional time help support thank you for that information um that is very helpful for me and for others as we plan uh, lessons and units. So as a reminder, we have additional resources linked to our unit and lesson plan templates. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you.